See? So two, two, two things come out of that. One is that, uh, uh, do you really believe, as I think you probably do, that it's, it's nice that you never went back to Baghdad today? Yes, I, I, I do think so. Uh, three years ago, I got an offer from a, a very um, big TV firm to go to Baghdad with a camera and with a crew. And they would like to make a film about me comparing with the Doe Flyer. Wonderful dream to fulfill. So I went to my friend, the head of the Mossad at that time, and he told me, Eli, sit here, write books for us. They will kill you. <laughs> well, I didn't go. But it's more than that, because probably you may not have found the same lanes. So there would have been changes. You would have found uh, cell phones everywhere. Uh, right. You know, they, they sort of changed the whole thing. Bravo, bravo. You know what? My Baghdad was of 400,000 people. 80,000 of them were Jews. It means that every fifth one you met in the street was a Jew. Baghdad today, 12 million people. They destroyed the Jewish quarters. Nothing has left us. They robbed everything. And we ourselves, by the way, we left Iraq with our clothes only. We left everything there. So it's not my Baghdad. So it's so what, what, what a miracle happened that I wrote Scapegoat, that I have Baghdad with me. Not only that, you know, once Simon Peres spoke, he wrote about the book, a wonderful article, I included the article in one of his books, and there was an excellent evening in Van Leer. So, and, they, and he said so many things that you feel that I took his hand and went with him in Iraq and to so many things that I was exposed there as a child. And then I had to stand up and speak. So I said to the audience, do you see that I look taller? They look at me. I said, don't you see that I'm a taller? I'm a taller man right now because I'm sitting on the shoulder of my father and he sits on the shoulder of his father, 70 generations which I brought with me in the Dove Flyer. So I am very tall right now. And they applauded, contrary to you, that what happened is <laughs> that when you bring your past with you and you don't forget from where are you, you feel your roots deeper and only then you can be uh, open to other different cultures and tradition that will enrich your life. Absolutely, and and I think the important thing of I felt is that you when you when you uh, have a certain landscape in your mind, and you write about that, and then when you actually revisit it, it somehow becomes smaller, more crowded. My father used to always tell me when he wrote his stories, he would describe what he used to see as a child out of his window in Rawalpindi. And when after uh, several years I got a chance to go there and to look for the house, I mean, I could imagine what he must have seen, but I didn't see any of the romance that he, he felt or that he wrote about because things, had, uh, things move on, houses get broken down, uh, shops open up, uh, you know, all sorts, of, uh, all sorts of things happen. And somehow it's better to keep, uh, keep a selective prism and your memory is actually very selective. You only Absolutely. remember the things you, you want to remember. And uh, uh, so that's, that's more useful. It's, it's not only that, that you are, we have a selective memory, but we invent our memory every day. So if you, you know, somebody said that if you want to write, uh, liars write biography. If you want to write truth, write novel. <laughs> <laughs> So which is the truest novel? Let's take three, Scapegoat, Yasmin, Duff Flyer. And the other two as well, I think all of them are true. True and not true. True, <laughs> that's very helpful. <laughs> you know what? The funny thing is that when I, when I had sometimes to 
read my novels again in case, you know, for now they, they are making a film, a feature from the Dofflein. So I had to read again the book and to see the manuscript that the director read, uh, wrote about it. So sometimes, first of all, I don't believe that I wrote it. And then, only, no, only myself knows the, 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 the lies that I'm talking, or the imagination that I put there. But within the years, I am unable to differentiate between, <laughs> let's say, the real stories that happened, or that I heard, and what I wrote. And therefore, I think that what I wrote is the purely <laughs> truth. That's it. Have you ever felt that what you wrote then be became the truth? It was actually, it happened after that and you had already seen it coming? Of course, of course. You know, I am so frightened because I... Sometimes I hear such stories. The last novel, Masjid uh, Ishar, uh, what's left, that I published, people are coming to me and tell, which is... Uh, Totally different, uh, different novel. When the time comes and it will be translated, I will send it to you. People are coming to me and tell me that the book, excuse me for saying that, changed their lives. Mm -hmm. Because they did things that they did not, that they wouldn't do before that. That the story encouraged them to uh, change their lives, because this is one of the themes of the book as well, there. And now when I read it, you know, it's about somebody who got a heart attack. I almost got a heart attack myself when I finished the book, my God, really, really. I identify so deeply with the, with the main character there, so I myself became almost sick like him. So people don't want to come into your books because... <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Because... They love to come, especially women. I th <laughs> well, that seems to be a common Israeli theme because if I can refer to the other great uh, Israeli author, Amos Oz, because there, a, a, a very good Israeli friend of mine used to say that whenever they passed Amos Oz's house, they would comb their hair just in case they were going to appear in the next book. Is, is, that the, is that the same thing in your case? Yeah, yeah, I tell you something, you know. Two, two things. First of all, people coming to you and tell you stories. Tell you intimate stories. Tell you unbelievable stories about themselves, about their lives. Hoping that you will write about them. <laughs> I'm telling you, because it's the only way to commemorate yourself. Mm. Otherwise, who we are? You know, I'm so proud. My fa I tell you a story. My son, who is not here, of course, went like all the Israeli. Uh, he was an officer in the Air Force. He traveled uh, to South America for for eight and a half months, and I was longing for him, desperately. And when he came, I, I went with my, my, his brother to the airport to, uh, to accept him, to receive him. Well, after kissing, hugging each other, you know what he told me? He said that I would like to ask uh, your forgiveness. I said, what did you do to me? This was the first sentence he said. He said, I never, read you, but when I left for South America, I took the Dove Flyer and I took Scapegoat and I took Yasmin with me. And I read the Dove Flyer. And now I know who you are, who is my grandfather, from where we came. And it's enriched my life. You know, I burst into tears, so has he. So the book is there now. Sometimes I go to the kibbutz quite often, and I write there till now. People coming to tell me endless stories. The same thing, we exchange once, Amos and myself, some stories of that type. 